What's up, everyone? Welcome to the show. How you guys doing? We got an action pack full of reports today. Great stuff coming at you, and a real big surprise. Real big surprise with the video at the end. Yes, that's going to be our main feature. <laughs> it is funny as hell, and that's what all God-loving, full-blooded Americans will do when confronted with this. Yes, I think you're going to enjoy the video. Uh, thanks for all the comments on the Moto Vlog. Yes, I'll be doing some more Moto Vlogging in the future. I know I haven't been doing it in a lot of studio work. But hey, I'm working on freaking the uh, radio station right now. And we're going to have a lot of good shows happening, man. A lot of good shows. Uh, a lot of good interests come from... Uh, People wanted to do their own, so that's going to be coming. You'll get more updates within the week. I, You know what? I had the experience. Yeah, the experience this weekend, baby. You know what? I hate drunks because they get stupid. They say stupid stuff. And next thing you know, things happen. And next thing you know, you're walking out of the damn jailhouse. I'm telling you what, man. I today was something else. Uh, I lit up some poor twenty, leaving the jailhouse, and uh, yeah, woke up and went for a damn ride because I just needed it. It was one of them days, baby. Uh, but you know, people are just idiotic. They really are. They're just idiotic. You got to get drunk, you got to get stupid, you got to run your mouth, you got to get all touchy feely. I don't know about you guys, but I don't like drunks. To, you know touching me and the one thing about having tattoos is the stupid asses the pecker pullers if you will do nothing but touch you they, don't, they just don't stop <laughs> and then all kinds of stupid stuff happens you know it you know a sad state of affairs man so you know what learn how to you know control your alcohol that's all I'm saying. Also, uh, don't forget to visit our sponsors, man. Uh, BaggerSyndicateCycle.com. Awesome hats. I got, you know, two more in today, man. I'm just collecting all the logos, I think. But uh, awesome hats, man. Uh, awesome shirts. I know they're on a big tour, man. I don't know if they're in Sturgis, but they have some fine looking babes out there uh, dancing and wearing their uh, hats. So they're going uh, worldwide, baby. Yeah, I think think he does ship to uh internationally so check that out uh some of the stuff in the news today we got uh hell's angels in the news we got the media being stupid making fun of freaking uh everybody going to sturges of course you know i think they're just jealous because they don't get laid how can you get laid looking like some of these tree huggers i just don't get it man i think that's why they're so upset with people because they can't freaking squeeze a load off because they're schlucks you know who would who, what broad would want to freaking uh you know get on her knees or on her back for a schluck Unless they had some big money <laughs> that I know. Uh, Harley Davidson. Okay, let's talk a little bit of Harley Davidson for the monologue here. Because I get emails uh, casterizing me because, you know, I just really don't come down favorably on Harley Davidson. Now, first off, let me start off by saying this. Yes, I've had dozens upon dozens. I have had, you know what? I could have had my own showroom of Harley Davidson's is what I've had over the years. You know, it would get to the point where, you know, I ride one and it's like, okay, I got to get another one. And then that one, get rid of that one. Let's make some money off of that one and get another one. Uh, so that's kind of what I do. And I, there's a lot of other people out there that'll flip them, and, but, you know, I ride the hell out of them, flip them, and that's what it is. I don't think that my problem is with the motorcycle, even though I think they are way behind on the technology compared to, you know, the foreign ones. And yes, I got a Boulevard, uh, a Suzuki, and uh, people ask me, well, which one's your favorite and why? Well, you know, I, you know... The uh, Fat Boy, I really love it for uh, the around town stuff. You know, well, besides that, I don't like putting, uh, you know, get, have to get up, wash the damn thing, all that bullshit. But anyway, uh, and I like the Boulevard for the long hauls because it's a lot more, 
how can I say it? It's a lot more easier on the back. You know, I'm getting old. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I took the bars off of uh, the Fat Boy, the 18s. Uh, but I, it's just a smoother ride for me. It's got more power, which is surprising. Uh, but anyway, it's the company and the way they're running it. I'm saying that Harley Davidson's kind of doing an Easy Riders magazine right now. They're, the, the Easy Riders ain't even a biker magazine anymore. Not the way we know it. But Harley Davidson, it's the same thing. It's not the company that we all used to know. You know, you got a foreigner as the CEO of an American company. And to top that off, he's a shoe salesman. And then I got a story in here where they just hired a digital executive, and he's a foreigner. It's like, how are you going to run an American-made motorcycle company? And I know that they really don't care about the made in the USA anymore because their former uh, CEO, uh, Matt Lebedich, said it don't matter. Well, it really does matter to the core base because that's what made Harley-Davidson so popular was that it was made in America. Now, we all know that probably half the bike ain't made in America anymore. It's overseas parts. But they just got this. It's like a foreign invasion coming in the Harley-Davidson. Now, the sales, I think they lost $92 million in quarter two. Quarter two, it just released, $92 million loss. And people are going to say, well, COVID-19. You know what? That's not the truth. Let's be real here. Let's be real. The other motorcycle manufacturers made money. They didn't lose $92 million. And why is that? Why is that? Because they got a line of motorcycles that the younger generation likes and the boomer generation likes and my generation likes for example the boulevard i like that model of bike i like the design i like you know even though i got the pipes on there and it's just as loud as a damn harley it still rides smooth and she's a bear she's got some power to her i think they are lacking in the design sector here their technology sucks yeah some of the newer bikes you know the 2020s and all that might be uh catching up a little bit but not as advanced as the other ones and everybody knows the price point everybody complains about the price point of a harley davidson you're looking at twenty thousand dollars on a new bike minimum minimum basic bike then you get into the CBO line, you're in the 30s and the 40s. You're not going to get anybody to buy on that stuff except for the people who have the money. You know, it's hard enough for some people to get a loan for a bike. More or less, get a freaking uh, loan for something that big, man. That's like having a freaking uh, mortgage on a house. And in these times right now, the economy ain't what it used to be. But one thing I hate hearing is Harley complain about sales and blaming it on uh, the first scene was tariffs. Now it's the COVID-19. When uh, you look at the others, uh, you know, money sheets, and they're doing freaking fantastic. But again, Harley had a good thing in mind when they were going for different models. Everybody knows their biggest mistake was Buell. <laughs> they should have never done that. No, that was stupid. Uh, or the V-Rod. That gave uh, the younger generation, well, with the Buell, an entry in the motorcycling. And the V-Rod, that's the style they like. They don't want to sit on a freaking bagger. They don't want to sit on a soft tail. You know, they want something that's within their taste. And that's every generation. Every generation you know, before mine, it was panheads and shovelheads, and with us, it was Evos. Uh, twin cams, oh my god, with, uh, I'm not going to even, get, you know, the cam shoe tensioner, yeah, that one uh, pissed me off there. Uh, how do you put cheap parts you got to replace after 25,000 miles so it don't ruin your damn engine? You know, I'm just saying. Uh, that's where I'm saying the technology, you know, not the best damn thing. Uh, but... 
one of the popular bikes right now, and you'll probably see it all over the place, is some off-road ones, man. Honda's African Twin is killing it. Harley-Davidson was supposed to come out with a Pan Am. Where the hell is it? No, you're pushing it back, and now during your hard wire plan, or rewire, whatever the hell you're calling your five-year plan, you're taking a lot of models out that would freaking appeal to the younger generation. Now, that's all I'm saying when I cover Harley-Davidson. You know, I'm having a logical discussion here, and it should be a logical one, but you got a lot of cheerleaders out there, as I call it, saying, well, Harley's the best, there's nothing else. Really, man? If you really want to help your company, you got to give them criticism so they'll kind of change their damn ways. And if you're in our, my age range and above, your opinion really don't matter much to them because they're not looking at you as their customer. They're looking for the new riders, man. They're looking for the 20s and the 30s. And I guarantee you that most of the 20 uh, age range ain't going for the bigger bikes. That's why you see them on sports bikes, man. That's their thing. And what kind of sports bike does Harley Davidson have right now? See what I mean? You got to uh, tailor the models to the customer base. You can go with this rewire plan all you want. All you want. And target only people that are in the 30s and 40s for the CVO market. But you're going to fall flat on your freaking face. Now the CEO who was just appointed, he might not own the losses from second quarter, but going forward he is. We're going to have to see what he does, but... Let's get into the news. I just wanted to give you a little, you know, because people say that all the time. And it's like, dude, do you guys even listen to what I'm saying? It's not like I hate the company. It's just the way it's freaking run. And people, well, you know, what would you do? Well, I just gave you some examples, man. Let's go to the news. Okay, here we go out of Pelham. FBI offers reward in connection to investigation of a new Rochelle man. Again, from the Daily Voice New York, a reward has been issued for a known member of a Hells Angels outlaw motorcycle gang that operated out of the Hudson Valley. The, M or the FBI's New York field office and Westchester County Safe Streets Task Force are assisting the U.S. Marshals Service in tracking down Christopher Slideham. I say go to Argentina. They don't have any, you know, they can't send you back here, man. <laughs> go to Argentina. Yeah, ain't that where all the Germans went after World War II? Yeah, I'd suggest going there. Who has ties to uh, New Rochelle dating back years. Slightham was released on bail after being arrested and charged in February of 2017 on federal RICO and narcotics conspiracy charges. Yeah, I'd hit the road. Uh, Slight uh, Tam uh, pleaded guilty and was ordered to surrender to the U.S. Marshals in July of 2017, but he failed to appear. A federal arrest warrant was issued for him in the Southern District of New York in White Plains on July 21st, 2017, after he was uh, after he uh, failed to appear. According to the FBI. Uh, he's 47, is 5 foot 11, weighing approximately 220 to 240. He has tattoos on his arms that include SS bolts. The FBI noted that uh, he has gone by the alias Crazy Chris and Chris McNear. He uh, was last seen with a short gold tee and mustache, although he may have changed his appearance to avoid capture. Well, the smart ones usually do. Uh, the FBI said, noting that he may be in the Hudson Valley. Dude, hijack or hightail it out to Argentina, man. Get out. You know, because if you go to you know Canada, they got an extradition treaty. You know, you know what? Rico and all that stuff, you're looking at some major time. I get out of town. Uh, a $5,000 reward has been offered by the FBI for information that leads to his arrest and prosecution. Uh, I won't be mentioning the hotline. If you guys want to do whatever you're going to do, uh, that's on you. But if you rat on somebody, you're a schluck. 
Anyway, uh, let's go to Biker Dad. Well, you know, if you're over on the radio, yeah, this is a funny thing. This is a high-speed motorcycle chase. And it looks like this guy is on, uh, hold on a second, let's get over here. Oh, there he is. Looks like uh, a Harley or something, I don't know. Uh, anyway, this guy just smokes this cop right here. Oh, he dead-ended it. If you're going to run from the cops, make sure that you know where you're running to. Because they're going to get you at a dead end. <laughs> Anyway, a California biker was arrested after leading the police in California on a chase that reached blistering speeds. Police say the biker was already going on 80 to 90 miles an hour when they tried to pull him over. The dash cam video, which again, if you're on the radio, come over to YouTube, you'll see it, shows, their bi uh, shows the bike whipping past the deputy and the deputy lighting up his lights and sirens. That's when the biker really hits the throttle. Hitting 120 miles an hour and swerving between lanes on the highway to get around other vehicles. 120 miles an hour is not that fast, man, you know. But maybe on the bike he was on, but a rocket, they would have left this guy behind. Uh, deputies say the motorcycle drove into oncoming lanes and blew several stoplights and stop signs. The biker surrendered after hitting a dead end. Dummy. 51-year-old Vincent Solis of Santa Clara had been suspended on a suspended license and was on probation. Well, you're going back to the joint now, dummy. He's charged with driving with a suspended license and reckless abating of a peace officer. He was hit with a $150,000 bail. Ouch. Okay, let's go to the Daily Beast where these schlucks just love being stupid. Yes, you know, the whole internet is lit up with these freaking liberal lefty freaking tree hugger pricks. You know, these pecker pullers that are bashing on bikers for going to a Sturgis. It just don't, it just don't stop. But even the official motorcycle brand of the uh, Sturgis rally thinks the mass gathering is too risky. And guess who that is? Yes, I talked to him about them in the opening. It's Harley Davidson. And he goes on to say, this is Michael Daly, the special correspondent pecker puller uh, for the Daily Beast. If you hop on a hog without a helmet, you are endangering only yourself. But if you go without, without a mask, you are endangering others. <laughs> pecker puller. The mass gathering at the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally amid the pandemic is too crazy, even for the company whose name is all but synonymous with the annual event. The Harley Davidson Company, they didn't put Motor Company in there, that's how much this schluck knows, has been associated with the rally in South Dakota, town of Sturges, since its inception decades ago. The big throbbing Harley Hog, dude, you know what? This guy's a freaking Tinkerbell, you could tell. You know, he's saying the big throbbing Harley Hog. You know, who describes it that way unless you're a Tinkerbell? Is the rally's official motorcycle. The town's main intersection is Main Street and Harley-Davidson Way. The plaza at the center of Sturges is the Harley-Davidson Rally Point. And those who assemble there stand on a huge Harley-Davidson logo. Bill Davidson, grandson of the fo uh, company founder William Davidson, attended the plaza's official opening in 2015. It's too bad, you know. The Davidsons don't, they're not involved anymore with the company because you got foreigners running it now. Uh, a ceremony that involved a blowtorch and chain rather than scissors and a ribbon. At, that was the 75th anniversary. The plaza included 75 bricks from a Harley Davidson's 100 year old headquarters in Milwaukee, uh, transfer, uh, transported the Sturges by a fleet of motorcycles. Uh, the company was always a big presence. Dude, you know what? Stop pulling here. Usually we have trucks and staff and products and demos and everything. A company spokesman told the Daily Beast, this year we aren't doing it. The difference is the pandemic, which makes a mass gathering of any kind dangerous, especially if the turnout is expected to reach 250,000 and the participants largely dismiss such proven precaution as wearing masks and social distancing. 
But you guys, uh, you know, grab your cheerleader freaking, uh, you know, rah, 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 freaking crap for your protesters, huh, you Tinkerbells? Uh, the dangers gay pause uh, even to a company that counts on people's willingness to risk being pinballed around without the protection of seatbelts or airbags. You know what? Go stuff something in your mouth. Uh, here's what I was talking about earlier. Uh, Harley Davidson creates chief digital officer role, hires Bozy Corp executive. There he is right there. Uh, Margaret Nazik out of the Milwaukee Business Journal. Harley Davidson has created a chief digital officer position as part of its initiative, the Rewire, and has hired a former Boise uh, Corp executive, Jadish Krishnan. For the new role, the rewire includes overhauling Harley Davidson's opera, uh, operating model and creating a better starting point for future success. Harley Davidson plans to announce its new 2021 2025 strategic plan called the High Wire, Hardwire, in the fiscal, uh, they should call it High Wire, because that's what that plan is fourth quarter of this year. Uh, he has over 20 years experience of uh, in digital transformation, he served as the vice president and chief digital officer. Uh, his uh, job will be to build relationships with both existing and new customers through digital experiences. He will be responsible for developing a new digital strategy, which they should have had one by now. Everything's digital. Why didn't they have this already? Uh, for improved customer retail experience through online platforms and in dealerships. This will include increased dealer digitization and direct-to-consumer technology. Quote, Harley-Davidson's about uh, experiences and an enhanced digital experience is absolutely critical for us to make our GIS and digital capabilities more customer-centric. Harley-Davidson President and CEO Joaquin Zietz said in a press release, we will take a completely different approach to applying digital technology across the company to fundamentally change how we operate and create the LU. Okay, reading this just now, why was this is the year 2020. Why wasn't this done years ago? Like everybody else. Harley Davidson is always trailing behind, let me tell you. To deliver our objectives, we must have an innovative and high-performance IT function. We need to be a high-performing team with cutting-edge leadership to move us forward. Then he goes on to what he has his degrees in and all that kind of stuff. You know, sad state of affairs how they're doing this stuff. Anyway, let's go to Corey Graff's Wall of Shame. Wall of Shame. Price police officer arrested, accused of illegal relationship with probationer. Why is it illegal, man? You know, if you're going to go get you some, you know, you're going to get you some. But you got to say it's illegal. A sad state of affairs. Uh, Salt Lake City. Oh, that answers it for me right there. Utah, you know. Hmm. Uh, a Price police officer has been arrested and accused of having an affair with a woman who was under the supervision of adult probation and parole. Michael Gordon Jones, 30, was booked into the Emory County Jail on July 31st for investigation of custod what? custodial censor. That's messed up. You guys even have a law for that? Custodial uh, sexual relations is what it's called? Anyway, I need to ease off this 420. The investigation conducted with help from the Carbon County Attorney's Office began July 30th when it was learned that Jones was possibly having a sexual relationship with two women who were under the supervision of adult probation and parole. Hey, he's a pet, man. He maybe wanted to get a Majua Twa going. Well, you can't blame a guy with that. I don't care if he's a cop. He wanted to get his nut off. That information was acquired by a parole agent and a Carbon County Sheriff's deputy, according to an affidavit. Somebody ratted on his ass. Uh, the relationship started in February, ended in July. Quote, she told us that she was aware that this relationship was not allowed because he was a police officer and that she was on probation. 
She also informed us that Mike had told her to not tell anyone about their relationship. Oh, you're a rat, man. You're probably mad because the other one got him better. Specifically, her probation officer and drug court tra tracker because they were required to report this. When Jones was interviewed, he admitted having a relationship with the women who investigators had talked to and said that it went too far, according to the affidavit, but he denied having illegal relationships with other women on probation. While transporting Jones to jail, he stated he was remorseful and sorry to all the people he hurt for his actions. Why are you freaking apologizing for getting your nut off? Anyway, this is a good one. <laughs> And Tifa gets wrecked in Colorado neighborhood. You guys came to the wrong city, boys and girls. Yes, it didn't go down too good down there. Let's take a listen. Tifa call me bastards out of the neighborhood because nobody wants Antifa in the neighborhood. Nobody wants them here, so we're marching them out. Patriots standing up, boy. Patriots standing up. Wait till you see what happens here. They're walking and, uh, you know, they got the flags going. Patriots here, man. Patriots. Oh, there we go. He's about to get tangled. Oh, my. You guys came to the wrong city, boys and girls. They knock, uh, you know what? A bunch of bikers down there knocking the hell out of them. <laughs> they got them in a ditch. Everybody keep their hands off your weapons. Keep punching each other in the face. Just don't shoot anybody. They just keep punching everybody in the Dude, they're nailing them. Oh, I love this. Oh, it gives me a chill. Guy with the American flag stabbing IT. Call me grabbing a knife. Call me grabbing a knife. Guy shooting the video is the one announcing stuff. Oh, commies go home. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. What happens when the kids play big boys? Sir. Oh, you gotta love it. You love it. Uh, one quote was: "So we are currently marching the Antifa commie." bastards out of our neighborhood because nobody wants antifa in the neighborhood nobody wants them here so we're marching them out around the 115 marks when i showed you that stuff uh at one point one of the, the extremists tried to pull out his knife but it was quickly confiscated from him everybody keep their hands off their weapons keep punching each other in the face just don't shoot anybody so I thought you guys would get a big kick out of that one just like I did. You know how I am with these people. It is about time this country starts fighting back. Carrie here from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. Just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market. Apparel that's based all upon bikers, baggers, and brotherhood. And ladies, we didn't forget about you either. Between tank tops and baby doll tees, we have it all. Now just go to BaggerSyndicateCycles.com and check it out. Mwah. What's up, everyone? Welcome back. Boy, was that some news. How, everybody like when Antifa got their ass handed to them? I sure did, let me tell you. I think my pecker got hard, man. Uh, anyway, we got a special guest to tell their side of the story. Yes, you know I love having everybody tell their side of the story because, quite frankly, the media doesn't. Uh, we're going to have Pac on from the ice cold riders and we're going to be talking about a situation that was reported up in uh north dakota and it was like what the hell is going on anytime i cover these guys they're always in the news for doing good well something popped up well you know that's life and uh they're here to tell their side they were already on black dragons and now they're on hollywood show you know and until you get on hollywood show you haven't been on oh, i'm just kidding black dragon uh anyway we got Pac from the ice cold riders what's up buddy hey how's it going today hollywood ah going pretty damn good man it's storming out here you know had one of them days you know uh yeah i woke up this morning came out of the jailhouse it was something else but anyway let's talk about you uh tell us what happened up there uh give us a little background uh that way the audience knows what we're talking about if they haven't seen uh it over from uh black dragon's channel well basically we had an incident happen down the street from my clubhouse where uh, 
two guys were at another, they were at a bar, and I guess something happened at the bar. Guy was at the corner of our clubhouse. The guy didn't happen. Guy ran half a block, dropped in front of our clubhouse. We uh, put pressure on the wound, got into the hospital, and the media exploded it, saying uh, Ice Cold Riders Clubhouse. You mm-hmm. know, we took offense to that. Well, I'd take offense to it, too, especially with all the charity work you do up there. And by the way, it's freaking cold up there, I hear, in the wintertime. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it, we get, we, it's freezing up there. We get up to we, neg- negative 40, negative 50 is, is commonplace here, man. Yeah, better yeah. you guys than me, man. I cry about it here in uh, northern Illinois. But they really did blow this up. Instead of saying that you guys helped them, they just wanted to focus on your motorcycle club like it was your guys' fault. Noticing that a lot here. Instead of, they could have talked about it happened at a bar an incident, but they just automatically put us in the news like it was our fault. And that's like what they do, or tend to do a lot up here, man. Mm. And why do you think that is? Do you think it is because they need to sell a story? Uh, make money on the clicks for the ads because, like I said uh, before, when I because I've done some stories on the ice cold riders, you guys doing you know your charity event, and when I seen it, I was like, yeah, there's no way this is what it's saying. Uh, and then you know to learn that this happened at a bar down the street, and the guy ended up on your doorstep. It's kind of like that Goodfellas, man. That movie Goodfellas. Something happened down the street. He ends yep. up on the freaking front porch, and next thing you know, it's you know the you guys' fault. That's not the case at all. So, why do you think uh, they doing that kind of stuff? Well, honestly, I just think they have a, a misconception at large that know us and know the good work that we do here in our community about uplifting and to the kids, the police, and it's, it's the couple of a small percentage of people here in this town that believe that you're in a motorcycle club, you have to be selling drugs or shooting people. Mm -hmm. You know, and we're trying to work past that, and we're trying to open up dialogue so they can come talk to us, but they would rather run a story like that just to get the views, and people can say, oh, them again. Right. But we did a, uh, we went and got data from the police department to show all the shootings that have happened since we've been here. And in 10 years' time, there's only been three shootings around our clubhouse in the vicinity, and we haven't been involved in any of them. Mm-hmm. So it, it throws their narrative out the wind, bringing crime to the city. Right. Now, did uh, did you hand these facts to the people who wrote this article? Yeah, we we, we Facebook Live did. We had over 3,000 views on Facebook Live, and we emailed it to them, and we told them where they can get the data from. We put up a map and showed the pins where we're located and where all the crime is happening. And, you know, we got we got crickets. We didn't get nothing. So they, you didn't even get a retraction or anything? Did you guys do a letter to the editor? Oh, yeah, we did a whole press release. We did a whole press release to the editor. We sent them a video. Uh, we sent a press release saying that, you know, we don't we don't condone violence and we didn't have anything to do with it. And, da, 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 da. and we didn't get anything. Nothing. We got one news lady uh, that ran a story. Her name is Faith here in town. And she said that we're some of the nicest people that she's ever known. Mm-hmm. Other than that, we, we got crickets from the news media here. Well, you know, we should come to expect that out of the mainstream media or even, uh, well, I can only imagine what you guys are facing up in North Dakota because it's kind of backwards up there, too. Uh, You know, I think it's a little more old school people that are up there uh, and they really don't want to open their minds to what's really happening. They're the kind that's going to believe whatever the media has to freaking tell them. You know, God knows, I remember covering uh, a story up there, uh, it had to be like six months ago, involving the Sons of Silence, and the same thing happened to them. You know, they were being blamed for something that they weren't even involved in, but, you know, because of their name, their po- you know, their popularity up there, you know, the media tried to blame it on them when they had nothing to do with it. So it seems like uh, there's a lack of credibility in your media. It seems like there's a lack of credibility in the media. And honestly, it has to do with, I honestly think that it's because of leadership. And me and my VP, we're, we're, we're black and our club is diverse. We have everybody. But it's just something to do with me and him. It seems like it trickles down to the club. And we're like the most diverse group of guys that you could ever meet. 
You know mm-hmm. what I mean? We just want to ride bike, do good for our community, and not be known for just drinking. We're here to stand for something, and they can't get over it. Uh, one time they, they told us that, well, if you guys are on bikes, if you, it looks like you're doing something wrong, pretty much you're doing something wrong. And I'm like, what the hell? It's been 10 years, unless I'm Lex Luker, uh still in plutonium. I'm not a criminal mastermind. So if I would have been doing something for 10 years, you would have been caught me. So it's just they're stuck on what they think being a uh, being an MC is about instead of coming, getting dialogue and seeing what we do. There's nothing behind it. There's no cloak and daggers. There's no shadow. We're just regular dudes that go to work, ride bike, and want to do something to uplift our community. Mm-hmm. Well, I see that all the time from because uh, you guys get a lot of articles written about you guys. What did Leo do? Did they try to correct uh, uh, this story, or they just let you fly in the wind? Uh, who who was it? Le- or law enforcement? Did they uh, try to correct the story and oh, say no, this happened they, down? They, they didn't do anything. No, they didn't do anything. They told uh, they spoke with my VP and said because it happened down the street from our clubhouse and we were the only place operating, that's why they brought our name up. That's why they brought your name up and the mainstream media just ran with it. See, that's what disgusts me with Leo, man. They always get the opportunity to put their side of the story out and the clubs never get anything. Here you guys are trying to put your side of the story out to the media and you get crickets. Uh, you know, it was great that you did a press release and you did a Facebook uh, Live, you said, uh, to try to get people to understand. But it's was that targeted to people that are within the town or what yeah it was targeted to people in the town because they have like a all kind of plays where people put up anonymous posts and they say crazy they say the craziest shit and we wanted to target our town to let them know the statistics because if you can't you can't refute the data if there's 10 years worth of violence there's 156 stabbings and knifing and only three of them happen in the vicinity of one block radius of our clubhouse that's not even 2%. So we're not bringing violence to the town. Violence is already here. Mm-hmm. Now, another thing that I haven't brought up yet is uh, a story about a guy getting arrested for this stuff. Now, he wasn't a member of your club. No, never. Mm-hmm. No, he was just a, a civilian. He was no, a civilian. He was no, no member of our club. Yep. And in that article, they still mentioned the Ice Cold Riders, didn't they? Yes, they did. They can't help it. They couldn't help it, but they can't help it. here's the guy <laughs> that was a civilian arrested, but they still put your guys' name in the article. See, what they're doing is trying to manipulate yes. the way people think, and I think that's disgusting. The media's not supposed to do that. They're supposed to put out facts only. And the reason why they put him in, because I guess the incident happened at another bar. He came to our clubhouse because we, we open our clubhouse to the public so we can raise money. And he left our clubhouse. And about five minutes later, he confronted the guy that had the incident at the other place. But I, it's like, so when a guy does a shooting and he leaves Walmart, do you bring Walmart up into it? Mm-hmm. You know? Right. It doesn't matter where he where he left. It was like, this is where the crime happened. So they're uh, putting no, uh, they're they tying him to you guys because he left your clubhouse and then did the deed. Exactly. No, he wasn't even the dude that did the deed. He was the dude that got shot. Oh, okay. Okay. And has that's, that's has he spoken up for you guys thing. yet? Or is I it... don't know. I don't even pay attention. Okay. Uh, you I, know, all I know is that he, he was alive. <laughs> right. Well, with an incident like this, uh, has the club rethought its policy of opening the doors to uh, the public? No, because... It's like this. The people that come, they come because they know that we're not getting rich off the money. They know that this money is going back to the community. Uh, We might change the dates, like instead of back-to-back weekend, which is a drain on us, you know, make it twice a month or whatnot. But we're not going to change our policy because generally the people that come to our clubhouse are good people. And they're coming because they know where their dollars are going. They're going back in the community. They can see it. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to change the policy. We're going to keep on doing. We're going to police our area good. And if something happens down the street, as long as my guys wasn't involved and all our guests are okay, what can we do? You know, we can't control everything. We only can control our environment. Right. Well, you know what? One good thing uh, that you're doing is uh, 
coming on shows that actually reach people. Uh, you know, I don't know how what uh, North Dakota's papers uh, reach up there, but uh, between mine, Dragon, and wherever else you're doing, like the 3,000, you're reaching a lot of people to let them know that uh, you're not up into that stuff. Uh, you're doing a lot of charity work, and you have because some of that stuff we've read on our uh, news program. Uh, so I just think it's awesome that a club's starting to take, uh, you know, take it to them, you know, the fight, because the reporting just gets so ridiculous. Exactly. Well, you know, in a uh, uh, final uh, couple minutes, tell everybody about your club, if they can find you on the net, or what you guys are all about, uh, what models, all that good stuff. Well, our club is uh, Ice Cold Riders MC. We started in 2003 out of Minneapolis. We have a chapter in Minneapolis, a chapter here in North Dakota, a chapter in Los Angeles. And um, here in North Dakota, our motto is Strength and Armor, and our mission statement is uh, to promote community activism and motorcycle awareness. And we've been doing it for 10 years. We just received an award from the school district for raising money to give the kids uh, pay off the negative lunch balances. And we've been active in our community here for the last 10 years. So we're on Facebook. Uh, we also have a Rider Republic gear, which is a business because our, our club is a nonprofit. Our, our business is Rider Republic, and we take all those sales and we donate them to the club to be able to put on events and pay off school lunches, give Christmas presents and all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. So we're really active in the community, and we don't, we don't plan on stopping. But right, you can I find us on Facebook, and you can find us on Instagram as well under Rider Republic. Rock on, man. And that's uh, with a Y. It's not with an I, BD. <laughs> yeah, or a Y. What's, or a what's y. up with you, BD, man? You don't know. You, you got to go get edumacated, man. <laughs> it's with a Y. No, I'm just kidding, BD. Okay. I exactly. like busting BD's <laughs> balls. I really do. You know, I love him to death, but I love busting his balls. Uh, but I really appreciate you coming on the show, letting us know what the hell is going on up there. You know, because it kind of took me by surprise because I know you guys ain't like that and stuff. And, uh, you know, it's great seeing you guys getting your side of the story out, man. It's badass. You know, I wish more clubs would do that stuff. Yeah, you know, it's like, we with the business. It's like your family, your kids, don't mess with that. My brothers don't mess with that. But for the good part, for the most part, people understand that. And we're here to do good for our community, uplift it, and help that little kid that didn't get a Christmas present, you know, that don't got a bike because mom or dad can't afford it. That's what we're here for. Everything else is just extra. And we love riding bike, doing cookouts, going places. And it's just uh, icing on the cake to be able to help your community. Awesome stuff, man. Well, I really appreciate you coming on the show and uh, letting us know your guys' side of the story. Keep us updated, man. Uh, you know, if they're going to have trials or whatever, uh, that way we'd have pushed back for you guys. But uh, with that, uh, my final thoughts will be coming up. That was Pac from the Ri Ice uh, Cold Riders, man. I'm going to do a BD here and screw it up myself. But uh, I'll be right back after this commercial break. Okay, that was a great interview with Pac from the Ice Cold Riders, baby. You know, I really like it when clubs come out and give their side of the story. But you also seen in that example why the hell clubs do not like talking to the damn media. Because they get it all screwed up. This guy left their clubhouse, got in a bar, and there's a shooting that happened, and next thing you know, it's the motorcycle club's fault. They patched the guy up. Like I said, it ha you know, watch the movie Goodfellas. You know, when the guy's a teenager, taxi stand, next thing you know, a guy gets shot, walks up, he uses all the towel. Boy, he's like, friggin', why are you doing that? You wasted a bunch of towels. Anyway, uh, they actually do a lot of good for the community. But they get crapped on by the media, and up north in Dakota, man, they, they, it's like 100 years ago out there from what I hear, man. They just don't change their thoughts overnight. And the Ice Cold Riders are out there trying to get thoughts changed by saying, hey, man, we got an award from the school for helping. We did this. We raised money for that. You know, how can you not want to have a motorcycle club like that a part of your community? 
Bikers are some of the most charitable people around. We see that every day. But the general public, all they do is get this thought is, like he said, bikers are no good. You must be up to something. Uh, you know, what kind of police department is that, man, that don't put out a correction uh, that's saying, hey, you know, you had nothing to do with this stuff. They're not going to do that. And especially up north, you know, in them country towns, man, what the sheriff says goes. Whatever the cops say, that's what happens. Nobody will believe anything else that's put out there. So it was great that he got on Black Dragon's show and put out what happened as well as ours because he's reaching a big audience, and that is what mainstream media is afraid of. They're afraid of. You know, I covered that one thing uh, where uh, only 16% of people get their news from uh, media anymore. The rest is off of social. And that's where they call them less knowledgeable and basically idiots. That's because people are coming, uh, guys like BD, myself, and other creators and influencers for their news. Because they know we're not going to, you know, BS them like mainstream media does. They did it to themselves. We didn't do it. We filled the gap in a niche market. In this case, Biker News. And there's other political commentators like Real uh, Time Politics uh, on YouTube. Uh, Tim Pool. I really like Tim Pool's stuff, man. If you haven't seen Tim Pool, kid's an awesome uh, journalist. He, get, he really gives the facts and his point of view is special. Spot on, man. Spot on. So go take a look at Tim. Uh, I think he has a lot. Uh, and then you got Joe Rogan, man. He don't play around. So a lot of people are coming to the influencers to get their news. And we've seen the reason why in the story with the Ice Cold Riders. Sad state of affairs, man. There are a bunch of pecker pullers in the mainstream media. Who wants to listen to nothing but propaganda all day when you want to have facts? You know, part of Harley Davidson's, and we're going to get into Harley Davidson right now because I already know uh, I'm going to get hell for everything I've been saying. Uh, they are actually going to influencers to help get their brand out there. A lot of companies are doing that. And the reason they're doing it is because the followers that a lot of the influencers have. See, our wheelhouse is radio, Spotify, iTunes, that's where we started, that's where we built our good audience size at, and then we ventured into YouTube or Facebook. You know, I kind of wish that I started social media earlier, but it was always focusing on HarleyLiberty.com and uh, the show over on uh, the podcast platforms, because that's what we knew. So, you know, we're kind of behind the curve on, you know, social media and stuff. Uh, Facebook, we got about 75,000 followers on that. So that, you know, that makes us happy. Uh, we're working on uh, the YouTube numbers and all that good stuff. But, uh, you know, what I like is people can actually, the reason why I like radio is because you can actually take us with you. You can plug in your phone to your stereo and boom, we're riding with you. Or we're going to work with you. We're in the car with you. That's what I like. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to say, you know what? Let's start a radio station. An online radio station. Let's get an app together. And let's put out some good biker tunes out there 24-7. Let's get a bunch of biker shows on there. Let's help other people get their start like I got my start. And, you know, bring this lifestyle alive. And that's the reason why I'm doing the radio station, because there's been a lot of people asking, well, you got this big thing on Spotify and iTunes and all that, why you want to go and do this one now? Uh, because, you know, I want to do good for the biker community, and, you know, I'm not going to make the same mistake. We're going to go YouTube and all that stuff uh, live on a different uh, page than what I'm on right now on Insane Throttle Biker News. But let's get back to Harley Davidson and why I, you know, I put on the title of this show, I don't think Harley would be around in a decade if they don't change. I think I got some good points and some good facts to that. What do you guys think? You know, I cannot see how they can, you know, I know the business end. I get it. 
but at least have somebody with some kind of motorcycling experience. If you haven't noticed, Harley's had a real bumpy ride throughout its history. And it always seems when it gets into the corporate or investor's hands, that's when it all goes to hell. We've seen that with the AMF years, and we've seen it since 2014. Once corporate executives get a hold of it, all they're worried about is the investors. They do not care about their core customers. They just don't. And that's when everything gets out of hand. Now, Harley-Davidson had a, tw uh, what, $92 million loss? That's a huge freaking loss, man. I don't care what you say. That's a huge loss in quarter two. And then you're going to have the cheerleaders, I call them pom-poms, go and say, well, you know, this COVID thing, this, this, that is not true. At least be real when you're trying to debate. When you look at companies like Polaris, Triumph, Yamaha, Honda, all posting gains, there's a problem. And you just can't keep laying on the blame game. The blame game ain't going to help the company. That's why, you know, the pom-poms should say, hey, w w wait a second here. We better start giving our advice on what we think. Write some letters to uh, the corporate office. Go to the dealership instead of uh, sitting there drinking coffee and looking cool. Tell them, hey, let's have a sit down. You know, this is what I think is affecting the company. Where are the dealership uh, franchisees, man? Telling Harley Davidson, hey, look, man, what's going on here? You know, this is what's working for our business locally. Maybe you might want to bring it nationally or internationally into your business model. That actually would be, the, you know, because I've been seeing the dealerships and you would never have thought and never seen in the past since the early 90s when everything started exploding for them that dealerships would be going under. We've covered all kinds of stories about dealerships going under. I would have never thought I would have seen that out of Harley Davidson. Never. But it's because of the business model and because of the bad taste that people are getting in their mouth for their brand. You cannot expect kids to go out there and spend $20,000 on a new freaking bike. Crap. I won't even spend that on a used bike under uh, over $10,000 for a used. There's no damn way. That's where they're out of touch with their customer base. Yeah, it's all fine and dandy if you find somebody with some pockets. But are they going to keep you going? No. What they're going to do is force you to compete against yourself in the used market. Now, they say, well, we're going to limit inventory on new bikes so it, you know, brings the prices up on the used ones. Well, you can try the strategy, but most people are onto that stuff now. Why should they go spend over $10,000 on a used Harley when you can get a brand new one? Through another the company, another company, man, Yamaha, Suzuki. It, it, you know what? These kids do not ha have the mindset, and you can see it the way they think politically, that you have to have a Harley. That's the thing to be a biker. That the way it used to be. If you don't have a biker, you ain't or Harley, you ain't shit. They don't think that way. They'll go out and get themselves a brand new Suzuki, Honda, uh, Kawasaki for under ten freaking grand. But you want to raise the used market on uh, the Harleys. That ain't going to help you, man. I think that's an ass nine freaking strategy. What do you guys think? You think it's an ass nine strategy? Because I really do. My final question is this. And I hope to see a lot of comments on this one. Do you think with the current course Harley Davidson's taken will be around in a decade? Let me know. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the show. I know it was packed with a lot of information. Don't forget, pound rock on, baby. Yes, we got all our uh, it, stuff over at the support store, so don't forget to go over to check that out. I really appreciate all the support. And looking forward to the radio station. Don't forget to visit our sponsors over at BaggerSyndicateCycle.com. Get some cool-looking ass hats, man. You know what? 
It makes people talk, I can tell you that. With that, I'll talk to you guys later. Have a I good one, goodbye. man. Vamos, adios, ciao, so long, get your hat jacked. So you want to know how to support the show? Go over to our support store and get some awesome looking clothing. We got rock on hats, rock on shirts. The rock on hats are embroidered. Get your exclusive merchandise now. Rock on. Don't forget to go over to HarleyLiberty.com. Get all your motorcycle club news. What's happening in the scene? We have a new article or articles every single day over at HarleyLiberty.com. And don't forget the sister site, BikerLifestyleMagazine.com. If you're into all that kind of manufacturer motorcycle and news, motorcycle rallies and bikers help in the community motorcycle club editorials and more and don't forget to visit us on facebook get involved in the conversation watch videos done a motorcycle madhouse and more also we have instagram yes instagram we have material that is not seen anywhere else so don't forget get on our platforms check out your daily biker news rock on Hey guys, this is Kara from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. I just want to let you know about a place where you can get the greatest apparel, top of the notch, all about baggers, bikers, and brotherhood. And ladies, don't you worry, we didn't forget about you. Check it out at baggersyndicatecycles.com. Yo show is now available on Spotify and all major platforms including iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, and more. Don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly episode is uploaded so you never miss an episode. Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari. Join our YouTube channel and get Motorcycle Madhouse and tons of videos related to the bikers. Join now by subscribing for free and become part of the crowd today. Always free and always entertaining. Don't forget to visit us at www.harleyliberty.com for your daily biker news. Rock on!